So second to last part of this section deals with converting from fraction notation to decimal. When that fraction notation is in that really nice form where we only have factors of 10 in the denominator. So when we only have factors of 10, it just um, involves us moving the decimal place that many places. But if I have a different number under there, how do I convert to decimal notation then? So we just have to do the long division, really. So let's convert. First example, 5 sixteenths into decimal notation. So I'm taking 5 and marking its decimal place, and I'm dividing 16 into 5. All right. So 16 doesn't go into 5. I'm going to need some factors of 0 after there. I'm just going to draw a few. We might not need that many. So we want to ask, okay, where is my decimal point going to end up in my quotient? Mark it right away. So, 16 doesn't go into 5. How many times can 16 go into 50 without going over? Three factors. 3 times 16 will give us 48. So, I'm left with 2. 16 doesn't go into 2, so I need to bring down another factor of 0. 16 into 20 is one time without going over. So, I'm left with 4. 16 doesn't go into 4, so I need to bring down the next placeholder. 16 times what to get me close to 40 without going over? 2. Looking at 32. Difference between that guy? 8. Again, 16 doesn't go into 8, so we've got to bring down another placeholder. 16 times what will give me 80 exactly? And again, remainder zero says, hey, we're done. No remainder, so that decimal is terminating. It stops right there. So, no remainder means the decimal term terminates. The terminator. It's a little lonely in the light room, all by yourself. You guys are going to laugh at my humor, I'm sure. Okay. So in that case, decimal is terminating. We hit a remainder of zero and stopped. So let's look at a case if it's not, if it keeps going. Let's do the next example, converting 7 twelfths into decimal notation. So again, 7 point, I know I'm going to need some zeros, so I'm just going to write them in right now. And again, wherever my decimal point is down here, it's going to have to be up in the quotient. Same place. And I'm dividing by 12. So, does 12 go into 7? Nope. So we need to look. 12 into 70. How many times is that going over? 5. 5 times 12 will give me 60. Looking at that difference, I've got 10. 12 doesn't go into 10, so we need to bring down another factor. So how many times can 12 go into 100 without going over? 8. 12 times 8 will give me 96. Looking at that difference, 4. 12 doesn't go into 4, so I need another placeholder down there. How many times can 12 go into 40? without going over. 3, so I get 36. Again, if we look at that subtraction, I got another 4. So I need to bring down another placeholder. So I ask it again. How many times can 12 go into 40 without going over? 3, what are we looking at? 36. What's the difference? 4, bringing down the next one. What are we looking at now? How many times again? Three. What's going to happen? It keeps going. We keep getting that repeating remainder. So we're going to keep getting factors of three. So it's just going to continue on and on and on. So whenever we see, I think these are called ellipse or ellipses, I don't know. Um, when you see dot, 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 it continues with the same pattern. So whatever, however it's behaving at the end is how it's going to keep going on for forever. So we get infinitely many threes and we repeat the same remainder over and over and over. 
So the repeating remainder means we have a repeating decimal. So, we need better notation for this repeating decimal than just writing 333 dot dot dot. So, we, this is equivalent to saying 0.583, and whichever part is repeating, we want to put a line over. So, the 3 continues on, so we put a line over the 3, and that just tells us it keeps repeating only that digit infinitely many times after the fact. So these two are equivalent, but we prefer in mathematics this one. We're going to use that notation. So that one for you to try, convert 5 divided by 8 into decimal notation. See what you get. So I'm taking 5. This decimal point is right there. I'm going to add some zeros. I know I'm going to need them, however many they are. I'm dividing by 8. Again, my decimal point is right here. So my quotient has to be right above in the same place. So 8 doesn't go into 5. We need to look at the next digit. How many times can 8 go into 50 without going over? 6. 6 times 8 gives me 48. So I've got a remainder of 2. Bringing down the 0, how many times can 8 go into 20 without going over? 2. 8 times 2 will give me 16. So I'm looking at a remainder of 4. So, 8 into 40, how many times? Exactly 5. So, what does that tell me about this decimal? i got a remainder of 0, so it's terminating. It ends right there. It's exactly equal to 0.625. Good. All right. Last little part of this section is rounding. There are some rules for rounding just so we're all consistent. We can really round to anything that we want but we want consistency across the board. If I'm comparing with my friend, we better get the same thing. So, rounding decimal notation, part A. Locate the digit in that place, and then consider the digit to its right. If the digit to the right is five or higher, we round up. If the digit to the right is less than five, round down. So 5 is the deciding factor. If it's 5 or bigger, up. If it's less than 5, round down. So, doing a few examples. 23,897.4839. We want to round that to the nearest tenth. So first of all, we need to find the tenths place. Where is it happening? Right there. And we want to consider the thing to the right of it. So looking at 8. Is 8 bigger than 5 or smaller than 5? It's larger than 5, so we need to round up. So my 4 will become a 5. So approximately, since we're rounding, it's not exactly equal to because we're cutting off a significant value of the number. 0.5. We round that 4 up. All right. So let's take this number and round to each of these places that were asked. So if I'm looking to round to the thousands place, we first have to determine where is that in this number. So I'm looking at tens, hundreds, thousands. It's right here in this example. So to the right of it is larger than five, so I need to round up. So I'm looking at this number, point one, point two, one, and I need to round up to eight. So that's to the thousandths place. Now we want to look to the hundredths, hundredths place. So next to that, again, ten, hundred, thousand, ten thousand, blah, blah, blah. So we're looking here at this placement for hundredths. To the right of it is a seven, so we need to round up. So we're looking at two, two. Tenth place is next door, so moving down again. Thing to the right is less than five, so we need to round down. So we're looking. Same whole number, but point two. We keep that number the same, rounding down. So we just cut off the rest of the number. That's what we mean by down. We're taking off a little chunk. 
of the number, to the ones place, what are we looking at? To the right of three, we have a two, so we're rounding down, so we're just cutting off the back of it. So, 50,983. To the tenths place, next door. To the right of eight is three, so we need to round down, so we're just, again, cutting it off. So we need that placeholder zero in there. 50,980, rounding down. Hundreds, next door. Eight is larger than five, so we need to round up, but when I round up for nine, I hit ten. So I bump into the next digit place. We're looking at 51,000. And last, thousandth place. To the right of it is a nine, so we're going to round up to one, 51,000. So it's kind of funny that these two ended up being the same, but it was just how our number was oriented. So we do have to know, where are those different place values? You need to know the names, so if I tell you round to one of these, you can determine what approximation of this number are we talking about. So example for you to try, round that gigantic number to those nearest place values that are given to you. And the one thing we always want to remember is we want to round from the original number. Notice how we always went back up to the top and looked. We didn't round from our previous rounding, because that introduces a whole lot of error, more than just rounding. So we always, always round from the original, original number. Original number. Don't round from the previous one. Okay. So each of these are approximations before you start trying. Sorry, cut you off. Before you start trying those, each of these numbers are pretty close to what we started with, but they're not exactly equal to, because we're missing all these factors of fractions of the number. So, whenever we have an approximation, we drew it over here, we want to use this little symbol. It's an equal sign, but I like to call it a little bacon, because it looks like, looks like a piece of bacon. It tells us it's approximately equal to. It's not exactly, because I've rounded, and I've taken off some significant parts of the number but it's pretty close. So, whenever we're rounding, the number is approximately equal to your rounded number. Okay, so now try. Take those numbers. So starting off, what is your thousands place? We need to find it before we can round. So we're looking at tens, hundred, thousands. To the right of it is larger than five, so we need to round up. So we're looking at this really large number, 0.29. And two, four, nine. Okay. Hundreds place, scooching over to the left one. To the right of it is an eight, so we need to round up. So what are we looking at there? Zero, two, three, point two, five. Okay. Scooching over again. Tenths place. To the right of it is a four, so I'm going to round down. I'm just going to hack off the rest of that number. Two, three, point two. Okay. And do you see why it's important to look at the original number when we're rounding now? Because if I looked at the previous, and I was looking at the tenths place, to the right of that number is 5, so I would round up and have 0.3. But in reality, I'm looking at 0.2. So always go back to the original. Okay, ones place. To the right of it is a 2, so you rounded down. So we just chopped off the rest of the number. Scooch into the hundredths. Oh, just kidding, there's one in between there, tens. To the right of it is a three, so we're rounding down, cutting off the rest of that number, putting a placeholder zero involved. Now to the hundredths, over one more. Zero to the right of that guy is two, so we're rounding down still, cutting off more of the number. And last, to the thousandth place. Looking at 7, to the right of it is a 0, so I'm keeping it the same, rounding down, cutting off the rest of the number. So sometimes it works out that some of those are similar when we're rounding. But, again, these are all approximations of this number up here. These are all approximately equal to, not exactly equal to. So you need that little bacon symbol. Awesome job, guys.